If you keep popping a breaker in the kitchen when you plug in the toaster and the kettle, or some lights dim when someone's using the iron or a space heater in a room, this video is going to explain why that happens and what you can do about it. It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY. And when this happens, the problem is, is that the devices connected to that circuit are drawing too much power. If it's close to the limit, the lights might dim. But if it exceeds the limit, the circuit breaker will trip and turn off. When this happens, this is an important safety feature of your home's electrical system, and you should not take this lightly. It means you need to make some changes. A breaker may also trip if there's a short in your wiring or other serious problem in your home's electrical system. You haven't been using the appliances, haven't been using the lights, and the breaker trips. Leave that breaker off and contact a qualified electrician. Get them to investigate and fix the issue. The most common problem with a breaker tripping is that you're overloading the circuit. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video. You can calculate whether you might run into this issue by looking at all the devices connected to one circuit. Each appliance is rated as to how much power it draws and that rating is done in watts. It's always printed on the device, either on a sticker or printed into the device, and it's usually close to the power cord. Here's the label on our kettle and the printed information on our toaster. You will see a number followed by a capital W. The light bulbs are also measured in watts, like a 60 watt or 100 watt light bulb. The higher the watts, the more the light. It's printed on the package the bulb comes in and on the bulb itself. Here is an incandescent and an LED bulb. LED bulbs usually have more surface to print the text. Incandescent bulbs have it printed on the top of the bulb or stamped into the metal fitting. Now, if you're trying to find the watts on an appliance or a light bulb, sometimes it's easier to actually take a photo with your phone and then zoom in on it. That's what I had to do with each of the examples I've shown you. The circuits in our homes are rated in amps. If the amount of power being drawn on that circuit exceeds the rating for that circuit breaker, the circuit breaker will trip and shut off power to that circuit. To convert watts to amps, you divide by the voltage in your area. Now in North America where I am, that's 120 volts. So the kettle at 1200 watts will draw 1200 divided by 120 or 10 amps. Since most of the circuits in our homes are 15 amp circuits, you can see that two thirds of all the available amps on that circuit are being drawn when using the kettle. Appliances that generate heat often draw the most power in our homes. So things like kettles, toasters, hair dryers, irons, space heaters, all of those are usually involved in these issues where the lights are dimming or a breaker is tripping. When we plug the toaster in, which draws 900 watts divided by 120 volts or 7.5 amps, plus the kettle that draws 10 amps, we can see that the total is 17.5 amps which exceeds the breaker limit of 15 amps. The breaker shuts off to protect us and our family from a fire. When a breaker trips in your home, thank that breaker for protecting you and your family. Now, lights don't always draw their maximum power, so they tend to dim before a circuit breaker will trip. Here's the label on our iron. At 1500 watts, it draws 12.5 amps. It used to cause the lights in our office to dim, because it was plugged into the same circuit as our office lights. The office lights had six 50 watt bulbs drawing a total of 2.5 amps. Since this is right at the circuit breaker limit, it caused the lights to draw less and dim because so much was going to the iron when it was heating up. See, once you understand the math, it becomes easy to figure out why a breaker trips or the lights dim. You may be having this issue because shortcuts were taken in the past in the electrical system in your home, connecting a lot of outlets to the same circuit or even appliances to the same circuit as outlets. I've seen it where a kitchen dishwasher was connected to the same circuit as the kitchen plugs. So if the dishwasher was on and the kettle got plugged in, the breaker tripped. Mapping out everything that is connected to each breaker in your panel will make any investigations a lot easier. Documenting your panel is a great idea, and I did a whole video on how you can do that using Google Slides. I'll link to it in the top corner. Now that we know why this happens, what can you do about it? 
Well, the simplest solution is to just plug appliances that heat into different circuits in your home. I did a whole video on how you can identify what outlets and switches are on all the circuits in your home. I'll link to that in the top corner. Once you know what is on each circuit, you can plan where you plug in each of those appliances that heat so you don't overload any of the circuits. Now, if the issue is light dimming, you may be able to reduce the amount of power being drawn by the lights simply by changing the type of bulb you have in those lights. For example, we have six pot lights in the office with a 50 watt incandescent bulb in each. That's 300 watts total. By changing those bulbs to LED bulbs that give the same light but only draw 5.3 watts, the total drops to 31.8 watts. That reduces the draw from 2.5 amps to only 0.265 amps. If the issue is lights dimming when somebody uses a heating appliance, try switching the bulbs to LED bulbs to see if that solves the problem. In our case, we realized that a renovation done by the previous owners of our home, they had connected the office lights to the circuit in the room up above, which was the area where we would plug the iron into. That's why the office lights dimmed. So what we did is we ran a new circuit for the office lights from the breaker panel, separating the office lights from the room above it. This is something you might be able to do. If you have too many devices on one circuit, you might be able to split that circuit into two if you can run a wire quite easily to that one area where you can split that circuit into two. Now, this is not a simple project. It requires skill and planning, and it may involve cutting into walls or ceilings to run that new cable. A more complete solution for a kitchen plug overload issue is to upgrade the entire circuit from a 15 amp circuit to a 20 amp circuit. Now this is not as simple as just changing the breaker from a 15 amp breaker to a 20 amp breaker. Do not do this. You can cause a fire in your home because all the components of the circuit have to be upgraded. The wiring has to be upgraded to handle 20 amps. Usually that's a 12 to wire. The circuit breaker has to be upgraded to a 20 amp circuit breaker. And the plug has to be updated to a 20 amp plug. All the components in the circuit have to be upgraded in order to properly have a 20 amp circuit in your kitchen. This is not something you should tackle yourself unless you are very experienced with electrical projects. It's also likely going to require cutting into walls and ceilings to run that new cable. So it might be a much bigger project than you initially think. Now, if you're in the middle of a kitchen remodel project, I suggest you upgrade all the circuits in your kitchen to 20 amp circuits. That way, somebody can plug in the kettle, a toaster into the outlet and not worry about the breaker tripping. This certainly will expand the scope of the project and add cost to the project, but it saves a lot of hassle in the future. Now that you know why a breaker trips or lights dim, you can choose what to do about it. One option is, is to use a temporary solution of plugging those appliances into different circuits until you can take on the project of a more permanent solution of putting in new circuits to handle a higher amp rating. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button so other homeowners who are frustrated by tripped breakers or dimming lights can find this video. If you enjoyed the information in this video, here are some other videos I think you'll find helpful. Please subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I publish new videos. Thanks for watching.